Well, I'll start with the um, with the curation piece. Um, so, so at RASA, what we allow people to do is identify sources that produce content relevant to their space and pull that all in and send it out via newsletter. But it's not just about newsletters, and it's not just about you know, um, you know, sending out through email, it's about identifying what is the most relevant content in the space and you being the, you being the authority that pushes it out. Because ultimately what we find is that if you're sharing relevant content to your audience, whether you produced it or not, people are going to remember who shared it with them and not necessarily the, the author and, and what site it pointed to. So they instead see you as the authority who's the most on top of what's going on in the space, the latest news. So being able to use tools to identify what, uh, you know, what the breaking content is in the space is super important. Yeah, I think about Associations Now newsletter that I get every day and all the great content there that comes from a bunch of different sources uh, there. And, and I also think about the amazing sidecar uh, newsletter uh, for those of you who don't know, Association Success is now Sidecar, and they have a really great newsletter with a lot of curated content around things that association folks. Yeah, they do a great job, mm -hmm. um, and that and that is a great job. Um, and so, what about co-creation? What? How do you define co-creation, Erica? Co-creation. So there are just so many people that you can tap to help you with your content strategy. We'll talk about just like how daunting content creation can be. I think, especially when you're starting from square one, like if your organization doesn't have a really, um, you know, built out content calendar and you don't already have like a stockpile of content, just starting from scratch can be really intimidating. So one way to kind of build up your stockpile of stuff, you know, whether it be video, which Michael, you can speak to much better than I can, or you know, written content, or just even social media content, and fleshing out your social media pages. Um, there, there's so many people that you can draw upon, even people from within your organization. So, for example, you know, you're. It's sometimes you don't always want to ask people to like, oh, write on your Facebook page about the company or tweet out about about the company. But like on LinkedIn, people are always eager to share content that'll make them look like a professional in their space, and so sometimes they're going to want to be involved in co-writing that with you, you know, you don't, some, it doesn't have to be someone from your marketing team, for example, who writes, you know, you know, your next blog, they can be, let's say they're a developer, they can write from a technical perspective. Um, so there are a lot of different, there are a lot of different people that can be drawn in to produce content. Yeah, I, that, exactly. I think, you know, for associations in particular, you have such an advantage because the practitioners of your what your whole association is about are your members. And mm -hmm. so inviting them to share their lived experience in the profession or the trade that they're in um, is, is really powerful. And so, you know, and that's at Gather Voices, we help associations and other organizations collect video content from their members and other constituents. And the, the thing that is uh, amazing is that that works on two levels that's really interesting. So. When, when you ask your members to make content for you to, in our case, videos, um, the, that content becomes valuable, right? That you can use on your social media and your website and the like. But what, one of the things we're finding is just the act of asking people for their own experience connects them in a stronger way to your organization. So that it's mm -hmm. working on two levels, right? It's saying, hey, that content's gonna actually be useful to us, but it's also saying, I care what you think I want you to be part of this. You're, we're creating this thing together. Uh, and, uh, and that creates a different kind of loyalty. It creates a relational and not a transactional relationship with the organization that's more resilient uh, than, than just transactional relationships and things like that. So, so I think that the co-creation really has power uh, for organizations to do. And so some of you who said you didn't know what co-creation was, um, maybe you're doing it and you just didn't know that that's what it was called. But I, you know, again, in the association world where you have boards and committees and you're really, your organization is made up of the practitioners already, uh, you really have opportunity to mine that content, that world of content. 
And Michael, what do you say to people who might say, oh, well, we don't necessarily have like the equipment to produce the video, or we don't necessarily, we can't put out the production quality. What do you say when people ask you that? Yeah. And I think, you know, when I started the uh, agency, when I started C3 Communications years ago, that everything we produced was super high quality. Everything, you know, you wanted to have that blue background, that perfect lighting and and all of that. And what's happened over the last few years is that the more polished something is, the less trusted it is, which is not, wasn't true years ago, but today people don't trust brands and organizations the way they used to, and they much more trust their peers. And so having content that feels like this person made it because they actually care about it, not that they were put up to it, you know, that it's something that they took their own time, their own phone, their own cam- webcam, and did so. I think you know we have we have elements in the Gather Voices tools that make content better, but it's still user generated content, and that has real power today that just wasn't true, you know, a while ago. Not every organization is open to that, however, right? There's some organizations where they they think they're protecting their brand in a certain way, but they're really um, limiting themselves in terms of you know what's what's possible. Right. 